I've played many games of all types of genres that I've lost count, and I'm sure many of you have the same feeling. If you were to ask me what's my top 3 favorite games, it's a tough question, but I have the answer to that, and it's either DMC or Elden Ring, first or second, I, I don't know to be honest. I, I can't decide, they're both so good. And then Elsword last. Now, most people would tilt their head and say, Oh, to that last answer, and that's fair, nobody knows this game. But it doesn't have to be this way. I guarantee a lot of people would love this game, and maybe even you. My name is Han, and I've been playing this game since 2014, back when we had our own little server. Rest in peace. 2014. Now, that doesn't sound like a long time ago, but that was 10 years past. I was just a baby goo goo ga ga at that time. I, now, I know I've made a video about Elsword before, but one, I didn't go into much depth, and two, that video sucks. And with that said, Let's talk about it. For the 90% of you who don't know, KOG or Killer Combo, for the mega OGs out there, is a South Korean game development company. The first game they made was Grand Chase, an action side scrolling 2D MMORPG released in 2002. Hey, that's when I was born. Ironically, the first online game I've ever played in my life got a special place in my heart. I'll just tell you that Grand Chase carried them all the way until 2050 when the game inevitably shuts down. Until 2021 when the game was revived on Steam as Grand Chase Classic, baby. Anyways, the next game they made was Fighters Club. Now I said was because it closed. You'll start to notice a theme here. I couldn't find much about this game other than this video. Then they made Ultimate Race, which again, I couldn't find anything other than this CBD footage. I mean, it just looks like any other racing game I've ever seen. And your boy did it again. They made another game that also closed within a year called Alma. Aima. Aima? What the hell Online? is this? Oh, sorry. I was looking at her beautiful blue eyes. White dragon. Anyways. That's enough talking about KOG. Time for Elsword, an MMORPG released first in Korea in late 2007. And this is their second game, by the way. But we got it here around like early 2013. I can't recall. All right, enough history lesson. Let's download Elsword from their official site because uh, I deleted Elsword like six months ago. This is the website that hosts the NA and in server. That includes Southeast Asia, for example. But not Europe. That has its own server, which is late by about like a year or so in updates. Seriously, as of recording this video right now, their latest update in EU is Morpheus, a character that was released here 11 months ago. At a glance, it looks okay, you got the big updates on top, some minor fixes and updates in the middle, and I have to say, the animation and art for this game is splendid. Overall, it's serviceable. Oh no, I forgot, I also do the sign code 3 as their anti-cheat. Oh fuck. Accepting this is the equivalent of getting shot in the foot and then robbed with my consent and blessing. But for the sake of science, sure. Now that I have malware and 5 Bitcoin miners on my laptop, let's log in. Oh fuck! There's all my characters, just to show you this really is my heart and account, there's no smoke and mirrors. I used to play in in servers, but since 2022, I've moved to NA. You can't use one account for two servers by the way, so I made another new account, have to start over again. What made me truly love this game is its core gameplay. I am that type of guy who puts gameplay above all first. I don't care if your story is bad, as long as the gameplay carries, I'm satisfied. Not saying they don't matter, of course they do. But I really value gameplay and combat. With that said, let's see it. To start off, each character has two basic ways of attacking. Light attack and heavy attack. Sometimes ranged. You can walk, run, jump, and awaken. What's awaken? Well, I'm glad you asked. By continuously attacking, you'll fill this bar. And once it's full, you'll gain one beat of awakening, up to a max of three. Pressing the control button will consume all beats and make you stronger. That's the dumbed down version. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of it. Finally, you have skill slots. At the start of the game, you'll only have eight slots. But once you level up and hit certain milestones, you'll have ten. Well, 12 if you count these two, but you never use them unless you're these specific characters. There are four types of skills. One is active. These are short cooldown, low, sometimes no mana cost, that you can just throw out for tiny damage or for fun, like Nova Emperor's grenades. Tenacity, these are also short cooldown, low mana cost skills like active, but slightly different because of course the effects, but also it has a small time stop. That's when everything is frozen for a split second, except you allowing for combos and catching. The only tier that doesn't include time stops is active skills. Oh, and awakening also helps time. Strength, average cooldown, and mana cost, these pack quite a punch. I think two classes use strength as their main DPS skills, but they're usually your buffing skills like Giga Drive and Bursting Blade for example, but also does a lot of damage of their own. Bravery. Your 
bread and butter main DPS skill, the thing that matters the most to your class, well, usually, but also costs high mana and long cooldowns. Each character in class have different mechanics. For example, Bluehen, Ein's second path, has a mechanic called Aids. Not Aids, Aids. With three different colors that you can randomly get or by using this skill, and every time you cast certain skills, as long as you have three of the same colors, you'll gain a different effect. What used to be this, turns to this. Or this, or also this. That's just one class, there's many more. Now I said all that, but the background footage you see here just looks like button mashing. And in a way it is, but the good kind. The kind that you have to think about before pressing your button, or else you'll fail your rotation, lose DPS, wipe the whole party, get kicked, then blacklisted. I'm serious about that, by the way. I haven't even talked about the advanced mechanics, but I want to see you and I want to you know that story of Mario in the beginning where he goes to Bowser's castle to rescue Princess Peach but once you get to the end of that level Oops looks like Princess Peach is in another castle Mario better get going Yeah it's just that But replace Mario with the Elser's party and Princess Peach with the L energy or whatever it's called And you can replace Bowser with the villains I think the problem is the way the story is told It isn't effective nor interesting just like any other peaceful day in the land of Elrios, Elsor, a knight in training, hoping one day he can be just like his big sister, Elisis, a leader of the Velder Knights. In the middle of his training, he saw a bunch of bandits seeming to be causing a ruckus, and using his strength, drove them away. But unbeknownst to him, Bertha, an ice demon from the depths of the demon realm, was caught stealing the village's treasure, the El Shard. In the lore, the L shard is so powerful and important that beings from different realms want it. So why is it in the middle of nowhere unprotected and unguarded? Anyways, L shard jumps in and gets his ass beat. However, somehow miraculously resonated with the L energy. Hearing all of this commotion in the forest, the two people came to the scene at the same time and decided to help L shard. Bertha, witnessing this, decided to retreat, leaving the L behind. He retreated because he's much weaker in the human realm, but we're not told that until much, much later. Once the dust has been settled, they introduce themselves. Aisha Landar, a mage, and Arena Erinel, an elf. What they didn't know is that the bandits took the L and ran away during the chaos. Thus, the original tribe of the Elf Surf's party began their journey crossing many regions, meeting many companions and foes. There you go, that's how the game starts if you play as these three characters. The problem is that, uh, let's say I'm playing Raven. Officially, in the story, you fight him here in Altera, the fourth region of the game, and then he joins your party after that. But if you start as him, you get a special intro dungeon that explains his backstory, but then you get thrown into to Ruben and you have to do everything as if you're the original trial. This makes absolutely no sense. This is not just him, this goes for everyone except these guys who have their own story. In other games, when an important part of the story comes up, there's these beautifully crafted scenes with meaningful dialogues and animations. In Elsor, there used to be something like that, with these really good cinematic cutscenes. They would only play once you finish a specific dungeon, and it only plays once so it doesn't interrupt repeated playthrough. However, that goes only until the Elysion. As of recording this video, there are 9 regions past Elysion and they have nothing like this. Not even close. I can assure you if I commission talented animator and given time to make a cutscene for let's say uh, the Abyss, I bet you he can make it. Why can't a million dollar company? 90% of the time you're just looking at PNGs of characters with different emotions and the voice actors talking. The voice acting by the way is a very good. These are talented people. Sadly there's no English version, only Korean. Well, there is, but they gave up on the Larian note. You're funny, but that won't save you. PUNISHMENT! Always one right after the other. I can't! The other 5% are cutscenes in the middle or end of a dungeon. These are fine, but most of the times they're just annoying. Everyone just skips them, and if you don't skip, you'll get yelled at because you're holding the party hostage by forcing them to watch the same cutscene for the 500th time. And the last 5% are PNGs that show up at the end of a big dungeon like raids or giant bosses. But most of the time, it's just this. <laughs> <laughs> you start here in Ruben, then you go here, 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 play each dungeon once, that finishes the quest, except these three and beyond. You get first job in Bethma, second job in Veta, Transcendence, and once you get here, you have to get the third job, which you have to play this dungeon this amount of time on screen. Then you go here, and your first actual good content. Notice I never talked about any of the dungeons prior to this, they're simply just not 
interesting what do you do you clear the dungeon finish the quest move on and repeat until you get here if you are a brand new player then these dungeons are good because they're new and you get to adjust the gameplay and speed but if you're not and will get to that on the progression part then they are chores to put it lightly you're just trying to go from point a to point b back to the good content these three dungeons specifically not the others is your first great gauntlet it has cool mechanics even cooler attack lots of faces and something that was missing prior a challenge dungeons prior to this are laughably easy i can clear it while I'm sleeping and i have you and everyone else only have three lives so you are encouraged to work together i love that it has some problems in the first dungeon to dodge this attack you're supposed to run to the edge of the map either side and fly up using the tornado until he does his big attack it's very cool too bad the game doesn't tell you any of this you'll just have to figure it out yourself or watch a guy in the second dungeon first phase you have to destroy these spikes if it's gray you have to use basic attacks or active skills if it's red you have to use special active skills if there's too many on the map he'll unleash an undodgeable attack and kill your entire party that sounds engaging right then what's the problem it's BORING! Most people go AFK here and let the others do the work. Most people have never even seen the attack because of how much of a joke this phase is whether solo or in a party. Why don't you just reduce the time it takes to transition to the next phase? Third dungeon is my favorite though. Honestly, there's no flaw here that I can pinpoint except that the game doesn't tell you anything about the attacks that can lead to team wipes and dash traps. Anyway, once you arrive here, you have to get Masterclass. Have fun playing one of these two dungeons 25 times, and one of these 16 times. Honestly, that's really it. It's the same loop after that, up until Monoterra. That's the current endgame. A few dungeons, and then raid, and repeat, which is fine. I find the important content to be fun, honestly. I find myself coming back for more, but not because I want to, but because oh I God. have to. Oh, hell. Let's say you're a new player and you just got your first character level 99. And oh, what's this? A new quest for L Resonance? You finished that monotonous quest and you unlocked Endgame. We'll talk about this real soon. Along the way, you achieved Masterclass and you finished the entirety of 4, 1, and 2. You can think of that as your guide on what to do next. Unlock that level 10. It's located up here. And just by progressing normally, the game gives you huge rewards. You feel accomplished, but now what? Well, you could do... No, you need to play Henir, a boss rush dungeon that you can only do solo with no deaths allowed. If you die, you reset. In Henir, you can get a max of 149 shards if you complete normal and challenge mode. You need to get Headhunter, Eroding Energy, Elifia Aura, and upgrade all of them to unique. These three are a must no matter what. Sorry, I forgot to mention, these are forced passives. It's just a passive that gives you stats, rare being the lowest and unique being the highest tier. In order to get all that you need, 200 for eroding energy, buy Headhunter from board, Elifia Aura you can get for free, 250 times 3 to get them all to elite tier, then 750 times 3 to get them all to unique tier, meaning you need 3,200 shards in total. Which means you have to wait 22 weeks before you can reach your max potential. And it was worse back then. How bad? Twice as bad. Alright, fine. How about I do something else while I wait 22 weeks? Uh, you could do Ross already and get a raid weapon since right now the best weapon that you have is the free one given by the Oru guy. That would be a massive power boost. Well, you can only do it once a week. You run the gauntlet once and if you don't get it by the end, you have to wait a week before you can try again for a drop. Unless you reset with a certain item. The game gives you correction 3 each week. If you don't drop, you'll fill this bar and eventually you'll drop the weapon. But in some cases, more often than not, your bar can look like this. That is my screenshot, by the way. It took me about two months, give or take, to fill the bar the full, and I even reset on some weeks. Okay, okay, I'll do those two at the same time and hope I get the weapon. What else can I do? You could also do the most boring activity known to man called ERP farming. Remember that thing you unlock called L Resonance? Well, by pressing the tilde button, this menu will show up. Do not put anything in the far left section. Instead, you need to farm and get level 150 ERP at least to level a skill to 100 and polarize to 50. By endgame, you're gonna need skill 100, polarize 50, damage the boss 50, adaptation 100, and skill cooldown 100, which is gonna put you at level 400. <laughs> Good luck getting that. Well, how do you farm ERP? 
Well, simple, you just play dungeons. But it isn't going to give you any EXP if you don't run either of these two dungeons specifically. The right one is endgame and is faster, but require you to have 3 million CP. You also need EXP gear, that means all of your costume, equipment and weapon needs to be sucked with EXP. Good luck getting 3 million CP with EXP gear unless you sacrifice a few sockets or you are a massive whale. In between runs, you'll get this pop-up. By complete random each time you play a dungeon, there's a chance for an XP bonus. This can go from 110% all the way up to 500%. So you just have to, for the love of God, to get this bonus, and it's a high percentage roll. Basically, you just do this for hours and hours and days and weeks until you get a high enough ERP. Eventually, it's going to take you hundreds of runs just to get like 40% of the XP bar field. Believe me when I say this, there are some masochists out there with level 600, 700. I think I've even seen a level 800 guy on the Korean server before. There's another thing that you can do that is free to play and is very important. It's called L Search Party Collection, also known as ESPC. By playing characters, leveling them up, and getting them all the way to master class, you get a permanent buff for your account. For example, if I have the Mercio at second job, I'll get 0.5% adaptation. But if I have them at master class, I'll get 1%. It may not seem like much, but if you add all of these up, it's very strong. Honestly, it's a great incentive to at least try out the other characters and at the same time gain a buff for your entire account. But do I really? when I go through all of that grind again, playing the same dungeon from Ruben to Rigomore, getting third job and master class. It's not like, oh, I need to do it one more time, no big deal. No, there are at least 28 classes that you should have an MC. Oh, but by leveling these characters, you also get EP. That's another currency. Well, what am I gonna do with all this EP, huh? Buy mana elixirs when I already have 5,000 of them? Oh, but if you speedrun it, it could only take like five hours max. Yeah, you're right. But if I don't enjoy it for more than two minutes, why would I do it for five? Five hours. Would I rather get groped for two minutes or five hours? And neither! Now, what's an MMORPG without in-game microtransactions, am I right? And oh boy, I'm gonna have a field day with this. To set the standard, what do you think a battle pass should cost? I'll give you time to think here. In my case, I would say um, about five to eight dollars, maybe ten if it has some like exclusive, really cool looking skins. Well, Elsword has not one, but two battle passes. One for normal players and one for early game players. Now, why would they feel the need to have two different battle passes that basically serves the same thing? Looking at the rewards, I will admit they're pretty good, but it doesn't justify the $40 price tag. $40! 40 big bands for each. Oh, and it's actually $39 and not $40. You shut that mouth. You kiss your mother with that mouth? If you do, uh, seek help. That's incest. Here, I will show you a list of things and games you could buy with $40 or less. You get the point, this goes for everything in the item mall shop. A fucking somewhat decent costume is $32. Fucking outrageous. It ranges from goofy stickers that you can show off to just straight up pay to win. Sorry to interrupt, I'm recording this video after everything is done. Um, I'm still wearing the same shirt by the way. And there's a Lunar New Year match that revolves around the item mall. Of course it is. Every time you spend 100 kaching, you get one very point. These points can be exchanged in the gift shop for either power, gacha costume, or fashion that revolves around your character's main past. In my case, it's Raytards. In his first First job, he looks like this. And second job looks like this. However, you cannot get any of these costumes anywhere. They only exist in these cubes for 14 days. Their effects are terrible. You should never use them. However, players have asked for years to add first and second job costumes as a fashion item. Lo and behold, they deliver. If you want the whole thing, you need 1200 berry points. That's 1200 dollars. Actually outrageous. Alright, maybe I just want the cool jacket. Surely can't be that expensive. $80. Alright, fine. What about the shoes? You can barely see them after all. $70. This is not a permanent event. Once this is gone, it's gone. You have to spend now. Now, 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 now. Right now. Please give us your money. The event is that you can spend more money for us. Happy Lunar New Year's. And then we have the enhancement system. Oh boy. <sighs> quite possibly the worst level enhancing system I've ever had the displeasure of experiencing. If you want to experience the later endgame content, you need to have a plus 11 weapon. And if you're a DPS, you're also going to need plus 11 armors. Enhancing from plus 0 to 7, you have a high chance of succeeding or going down a level. From plus 8 to plus 11, you're either going to go down a level, reset to plus 0, succeeding, or worst of all, 
break. If it breaks, you can't use or enhance it anymore until you fix it. If you don't want it to go down a level or a reset, you have to use the blessed fluoride stone. And if you don't want it to break, you have to use the blessed restoration scrolls. You can only get one of these per week by doing a weekly quest for 5 fluorides or one scroll. And the only other way of getting them is either by the item mall or other players selling them through the board at ridiculous prices. When I got back to recording footage for this video, I noticed they added an enhanced pity that is completely useless. If you do basic second grade math, you might as well just outright buy the plus 11 amulet because it's cheaper that way. Then there's reforging, which is pretty much enhancing, but a different category only for Rebumor or Tenebrous armor, and you're limited by daily and weekly quests unless you are a gig Whale. And the worst part is that all of the things that I talked about directly affects the combat power. No matter if you're a support, DPS, sub DPS, you will need this amount of CP to enter this dungeon. CP does not equal power or damage. This locks especially new players from the late to end game dungeons. Unless they grind for months and by that point if they don't enjoy the grind they would already quit. They don't even have the chance to experience the content. Sure you can say full growth helps them achieve this specific CP. But if you're banking on an event that comes every few months, giving free stuff to help with your progression of the game, then the game has a shit progression system. There's so much more that I want to talk about, but I think I've me, 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 me. enough. I haven't even talked about tiles that you need to grind 500 raid dungeons for, or how the market is crashing, the botting issues, PvP, or how KOG never listens to community feedback, whether it's from NA or Korean players. And when they do, it's three years late and they make the worst adjustments possible. Did you work on anything in the office today? Oh, no. Better enhancement system? Oh, no. Buff Aisha? Oh, no. I... Side note, during a Q&A, the interviewer asked about reducing the count for the setting sun. That is a title that gives very strong effects and is still being used to this day for optimal rotations. How do you get it? 500 runs of Titan's Grotto. And they just straight up said no. But after getting told how you obtain and just how strong the title was, they backtracked and said, oh yeah, sorry, we're losing. Bro, they don't even play their own game. Can someone wake up KOG and tell them what game they're making? Every time they have a Q&A session, it's always the same answer. It's like talking to a brick wall. Actually worse, at least a brick wall can't spout bullshit at you. Let me be 100% serious with you. I think KOG has a very unique game on their hands. I have yet to see a game just like Elsor. But after 10 years, I've put down my mantle six or eight months ago. I, I don't remember at this point. Whatever changes they make to the game, I hope it's for the best. I have no hope for the developers, but I wish the developers treat you with the respect that you deserve. I've spent so much money and gotten so little in return that I'm, I'm embarrassed to admit. A shame. I came back for a few days to record footage and gather my thoughts and honestly, uh, I still had a lot you. of fun. Mostly because my friend was there, but Brother, it's do you just see that getting to that point of having fun is really, really difficult and not worth it. What I'm trying to say is that the game is just too repetitive and grindy. They don't respect your time. Also, the last new content was six months ago. Surely that's enough to tell you something about the game. But if you still like the game and want to play it, sure, absolutely, go ahead. Don't let me or anyone else try to stop you. I'm not your father. Play the game how you like. All right, now I'm done. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry for being silent for 10 months. I really wanted to make videos, but I either have no ideas or when I do have ideas, my computer can't handle the editing software and I'm editing at three frames per second. And uh, yeah, anyways, have a good day and I'll see you soon. Adios.